knowledge of the four tales, you are the Windbringer. The teller would see you presently. Come closer, human. Closer. I cannot see your face. Closer still. Come sit here by me. There you are. <laughs> you see, my eyes are not what they used to be. Ages ago, I could spot a ladybug crawling up a straw of grass from 15 tree lengths up. Now, I have a hard time seeing my supper. But my ears, balance be praised, my ears, they are as good as ever. I could hear you outside, learning the tales my children tell. You are a good listener and a fast learner. They were interesting stories and your people told them well. That is what we do. The Elation are the keepers of the tales, and I am their teller, the one who must know all the tales told since the day we came to this world. How can you do that? How can you remember every story ever told? The secret is to tell them often and to tell them in your own words, not the words of your ancestors. Doesn't that mean that the stories change with every generation? Yes, as all tales must. Change is important. Otherwise, the tales will have no meaning to us. They will just be words. And we do not care about the words. We care about what the words tell us. How long have your people been telling stories? Since the beginning, human. Since we came to this world a long, long time ago. You're not from Earth? From Arcadia? Not according to our tales. We came on a great wind before the Divide, when the Earth was one and humans had yet to learn of magic and science. But we were a different people then, and the tales we tell from that time are vague and incomplete. Like myths and legends, the younger relation pay little attention to these tales. Sometimes I worry they will be lost with me, these tales, and I am getting old, very old. I came to you to find answers to some important questions. Ask, and I will try my best to answer. Have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Once, long ago, when my people lived in harmony with the Merim, there were stories of an old god worshipped by the Merim who resided deep in the darkest depths of the ocean. According to legend, the old god had once brought the Merim into their realm, into the ocean, and he was now sleeping, resting, before the journey back. Back where? To a great ocean amongst the stars. When the time came, he would gather the Merim and bring them home with him, back to their world, to their ocean. Strangely enough, we have a similar tale. It is said that the great wind that brought us here will someday return to bring us back to a place where we can soar forever on warm winds. Like heaven. In a way, perhaps, but without the need for any of us to die. The great wind will just sweep us up and carry us away. Every evening before I go to sleep, I recite this tale to myself. It is a comforting one. What do you know about the dry kin? Kin are numbered four, or so our tales tell. Two in this world, two in the other, the mirror world. The white and the blue, the red and the green. Do you know where they are? No, the tales never say. The kin are elusive. They keep to themselves. I have never seen one myself, and I doubt any of my kind has. 
The tales do say that our past and our future are tied to the fate of the kin, but how I would not pretend to know. This is one tale that is yet to be told. Do you know anything about the Guardian's realm? This is human business. Would you not know more than I? Your people are the keepers of the tales. You remember more than humankind has forgotten. Please, I need to hear what you know. That is very little. The Guardian's realm is home to the Guardian in his tower. No one is permitted within except the Guardian who was, the Guardian who is, and the Guardian who will be. And of course the Dryak kin, who were instrumental in its making. Have you ever heard of the existence of a hidden entrance to his realm? Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard tell of such a thing, though I would not know where it is. I gather that one of the kin may be able to tell you. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. I am glad I could help you with some answers. I'm the Windbringer. I know you are. <laughs> it's strange to me to hear those words spoken. I did not think they would be in my lifetime. But here you are. Standing in front of me as real as the sky is blue. I'm sorry I have to ask, but what is it that the Windbringer is supposed to do for you? I did not expect you to walk in here and have all the answers, child. The balance has both blessed you and cursed you, and it has sent you here to do what it wills. The Windbringer is said to be the first sign of the great wind that will take us away from here. For a long time, the Elation have lost the strength they used to have. Our bones have become weak, and our wings fragile. Where we used to be able to soar for days on strong winds, we are now using our legs to walk rather than fly. Why this is, we do not know. Ten Yen! You know of the reason for this? I'm just guessing, but it makes sense. Go on. The tales also say that the Windbringer will unite us with our past and end the age-old strife. I know. You must make peace and be reunited with the Marum. You share a common ancestry. I have always thought we did. The tales were too similar, the signs clear. But my people, they... They will have a difficult time understanding why and how this can be. If you don't, both the Elation and the Marum will die out. When war broke out between your people, and you were forced to move up into the mountains, it compromised a precarious symbiosis. A substance called Tanyan was abundant, where the Marum and the Elation lived in close proximity. It brought fish, and heat, and light to both your people. But now, living up in the mountains, your way of life, your diet, your customs and habits, they've all changed. And that's probably the cause of your brittle bones and fragile wings. Then we must make peace with the Marum and restore the balance between us so as to strengthen us both and prepare us for the journey that will surely come soon. When our sitting is over, I will speak to my people and I will elect one representative from the Elation to meet with the Marum in the place of your choosing to open a dialogue. I guess it's time for you to talk to your people, and for me to make arrangements with the Marum. Where do you wish for our meeting to take place, Windbringer? You want me to decide? Um, well... I know. Send your ambassador down to the ancient caves by the beach. Inside, there are remnants of an old Alation settlement and a Marum city. It's a good place for your two people to meet, don't you think? Yes. And could you ask if they would bring their half of the stone? The stone? You have the other half? We have held on to it for centuries, knowing that someday it would be of use to the Windbringer. It will, trust me. And we must make haste and arrangements. It is an important day, so let us not waste light. Go and wait for my ambassador in the caves. It's amazing. This place is so beautiful. And the scent. 
of sea and rock and mist. This scent is of home. This was home a long, long time ago, according to the tales. We lived in peace with the wet tail, uh, with the mirror back then. Now you'll be able to live in peace again. And with the Tan Yan bringing fish to your doorstep, you'll be able to eat well and restore strength to your bones. Soon you might even be able to soar on the winds for days like you used to do. I hope you are right, Windbringer. And I hope that the wet, the mirror, will see the sense in it too. They are coming, are they not? They said they would. Hush, I hear something. We are here, Water Stiller, as was promised. Good. Now, as representatives of your respective peoples, you, the Queen of Amiram City, and you, guard to the Elation Teller, must fulfill the prophecy and join the two parts of the One Stone. We hope that our peoples may be joined again, Elation, and that we may live in peace and prosper. As do we, Merum, and we pledge to do all we can for this to happen. The stone is now whole, Windbringer, and the elation and the mirror will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Thank you. The both of you. Come now, April, and we will take you to our sleeping god. May his wisdom guide you and lead you down the right path. It's a rock. I think it's alive. It's soft and spongy. It's some kind of organic sensor. Hello? Is anybody in there? Spooky. Well, I guess it's an invitation of sorts. There's air in here. And it's dry. I swear I'm never taking a bath again.
I'm sorry to disturb you, but I need some answers. Everyone needs answers. Everyone has questions. I am not the Oracle. I cannot answer all your questions. I don't expect you to answer all of them, but I was hoping for an answer to at least some of them. Then ask, and be gone. I'm looking for a jewel called the Dragon's Eye. Yes. I have one such jewel. I guess that's it. Take it. Are you sure? Take it. It is yours now. It is part of your destiny. Okay. Tell me if it hurts. I need to know where I can find the gateway to the Guardian's realm. So you come to me. They told me... Well, they as in the few people who could tell me anything at all. They told me that if anyone would know, It'd be you. I know. When the earth was divided, there was a doorway left open where the tower was built. But it's moved, hasn't it? That spot, when Stark and Arcadia were created, that spot moved somewhere else. Into the sky. Amongst the stars. But where? I knew you were coming. Your journey has not been a quiet one. Even down here, I could hear you. I speak with the dark people. They are my messengers. They have prepared a map. The entrance you are looking for. You knew I was coming and why? Then, okay, I know this is probably a futile question, but why didn't you send the dark people to me earlier? You could have saved me a lot of time and hard work. You are afraid of time and hard work. No, but it's the principle of it, isn't it? No, it is not. You had prophecies to fulfill. You had a purpose. Bringing my children together in preparation. This was important. And for that, I thank you. What is the Day of Ascension? The day when the kin return home. When my siblings come to me and we rise toward the stars for our journey back to our cradle. This is the Day of Ascension. So, you're going back to... wherever it is you came from? We will... eventually. When everything is ready. When what's ready? I will not answer that question. It is not necessary for you to know. What am I? What do you mean? You 
You said you know what I am. What am I? You do not know. Then it is not I who should teach you about your heritage. You must make this discovery on your own. Listen, I'm tired. I'm wet. I'm at the bottom of the sea, and I'm breathing with the help of a polyp stuck in my esophagus. So just cut the Buddhist bullshit about a journey of self-discovery and answer my question. Please? Your question has already been answered. That is all I will tell you. Your journey began with an answer. It is only now that you know the question. That's so not helpful, but thank you. Now I wish to sleep. You said something about a map? The dark people have it. They will meet you. I will bring you to them. What? Now? Yes. Hold on. The ship is enshrouded in a thick fog, very mystic-like. Thanks for taking me on board. Who are you? Uh, well, I thought you... I mean, didn't the old dragon... Well, I'm April Ryan, from Stark, and I guess you're a dark person. But who are you? I'm just a student, not anybody special. You are special. Who are you? I'm not. I'm just... <sighs> I'm the Windbringer. I'm the Water Stiller. I'm April Bondu Mbata of the Banda and the Venar Kangang La. I'm a shifter. I will someday become the 13th Guardian, the Protector of the Balance. And I'm April Ryan. This is who I am. Yes, that is who you are. And you are a wave. The ancient dragon, the blue of the dry kin, told me you had a map for me. A map of stars, yes. It was made for you in our library, and given to me to hold. It is yours now. Keep it well. It is the only one. I'm looking for an ancient stone given to you by the Sentinel, the Fathers. You came for the stone. Of course we have it with us. Our ship would not have been chosen to meet you were it not for the stone we carry with us. Everybody's just waiting around for me to show up, so that they can give me stuff. Who knew adventuring was going to be this easy? It will not always be so easy. Of that I can assure you. But here is our stone. We entrust it to you. As we were instructed to do when the Fathers first entrusted it to us. Why am I, uh, a wave? You have a purpose. You play an important part in the cosmos. A wave is someone who propels people and events toward change, towards the future. And... 
that's what I do? You are a wave. There are ripples from your passing, and they spread wide and far. Those ripples will never die down. The worlds will be changed by your journey. You're telling me that everything I do affects the universe? You cannot escape it. You are a wave. Can this ship take me back to Mercuria? I mean, would you mind? We will bring you to Mercuria henceforth. It will take the night, but we will be there at first light. That's fine. Thanks a lot. You are free to rest here, to sleep, while we travel. The flames will keep you warm, but do not move too far away. My brothers are not friendly with outsiders. They do not take kindly to intrusion. I'll keep that in mind. I'm staying right here. Good. Sleep. Did you sleep? Very comfortably, thanks. Where are we? In the Mercuria Harbor. But there are barely any ships here. I do not know why. We must leave you here. We have other business. Carry your wave into the future, April. Whatever that means, I'll try. Where did all the ships go? They're gone. This can't be a good sign. I mean, duh. The city looks strangely quiet and deserted. And the sky. Those are not ordinary clouds. They look more like... like smoke. What's going on here? I know that sound. to open just in time. It has to be Cortez. Finally. Hello? Anybody there? Who's there? It's just me. April, it's good to see you again. Father Raul, where is Cortez? I thought he'd be here. I haven't seen Cortez for a week, and it worries me. He usually stops by once every few days. When did you last see Cortez? It must have been... I think it was last Sunday. Exactly one week today. He's been gone longer than that before, but this time I... What? This time, I have a feeling there's something wrong. I don't like that feeling. Is there anything you're not telling me, Father Raul? I don't know what you, uh... Yes, you do. You're no ordinary priest. You know about Stark and Arcadia, about the balance, and I'm sure you know a lot more about Cortez than you're willing to let on. How did you... I heard you and Cortez talking last Sunday, and it scares me. And pisses me off to think that you're using me, that you're keeping things from me. 
I thought for sure that I could trust Cortez, but as it turns out, I can't. I was hoping to confront him with this, but he's not around, and you... You're part of it too, aren't you? April, you have to trust me when I tell you. Sorry, I can't trust anybody anymore. There's so much at stake, and I... I don't know who to trust, Father. Please, tell me what you know. I'm sorry, April. I mean, I'm sorry you don't feel like you can trust anyone anymore, and I'm sorry that I don't know more than I do. But I will try to answer your questions honestly and openly as much as I can. Who is Cortez? What do you mean? The way people react when I mention his name, the fact that he seems to have been alive for a very long time, and that he knows as much as he does. Who is he? <laughs> it's funny, but I've been asking that very same question myself many, many times. Who is this man? He's old, yes, and powerful. He has strong magic, but he rarely lets on exactly how strong he is. He prefers to be considered eccentric, crazy even. They are both excellent disguises. You still haven't answered my question about Cortez. <sighs> That's because I cannot answer. I just don't know. He found me when I first came here. You see, I'm not just a Catholic priest. I'm also a sentinel, a minstrel. You're a minstrel? Yes. Do you find that strange? How can you belong to two religions at the same time? Belief in the balance and belief in God are not mutually exclusive. The Sentinel Order was founded on the basis of protecting the balance, not to worship a higher power. As long as our devotion to whatever God we believe in doesn't conflict with our duty to the balance and vice versa, who is to say we can't work in the best interest of both? I guess. I just always thought of the Sentinel as its own faith. It is a faith, but a faith in something less than God yet more than magic or the laws of nature. The balance was created by someone, was it not? I don't know. Nor do I. But I believe. I have faith. That's enough. What did you mean when you said Cortez found you? One day, he came to visit me here. He knew who I was, that I was a minstrel and that I was devoted to restoring the balance as well as to my guide. We soon became good friends. He was very worried about the imminent collapse of the balance, yet told me that he was waiting for someone special, someone who might be able to help us. Me? Yes. He waited for a long time for you to show up, and when you did, it was hard for him trying to convince you that he wasn't crazy. I guess his disguise was too good. I don't know much more than that. Cortez tells me very little. Only that you're the key to the survival of the balance. I can only assume that you're the new guardian? That's what I've been told. Not by Cortez, of course. No. I understand your frustration, but I cannot help you any more than I have. If there's anything, anything at all... Thanks, Father. But you've done enough. It feels like I've done nothing. But God be with you, and the balance too. How did you become a Sentinel Minstrel? The Sentinel are not numerous and stark. Not yet. Not with the Vanguard, the Church of Voltec keeping a watchful eye and striking down anyone who dares to proclaim their faith in the balance. But the Sentinel are here, and when they find someone who they believe will be sympathetic to their cause, they approach them. That's what happened to me. They asked you to join? No. They told me the truth. I was studying theology at the time, and I found scriptures that challenge conventional wisdoms made me question the validity of my faith. But once I learned the truth about the balance and the Guardian and the ongoing war with the Vanguard, it became easier to believe in God again because now things made sense. 
And so, in the end, I chose to become not only a priest, but a minstrel. And I don't regret my decision. Have you ever been to Arcadia? No, I'm not a shifter. I'm stuck here, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't mind. I've been fortunate enough to read most of the scriptures of the balance, and that in itself is a rare privilege for a stalker like me. I don't have any more questions right now. If you do, please ask. I want to help, and that's the truth. How are things here? You mean in the cathedral? No, no, I mean here in Newport. How have things been going? Nothing out of the ordinary. Why? Have you been away? You could say that, yeah. It's just been hot and humid, and it's getting worse by the day. And apparently crime is on the rise. But what else is new? Can I ask you some more questions? Always, April. I don't have any more questions right now. If you do... I have to... I hope to see you again soon, April. Please take care of yourself. And if you see Cortez, tell him to see me. Tell him that... that I've been worried. Look like a real sailor. Sweet old ladies just ain't what they used to be. The doors are closed. Where there's where there's ventilation, there's life. Even if I could somehow squeeze through that hole.
I really should go home and change into something that doesn't make me look like a medieval restorationist.